Did you guys know that majority of Canadians, more than 90% at the age of 67 are financially unstable? Majority of them don't have a retirement plan and they're not saving enough money, they're not making enough income during their lifetimes and they definitely don't have enough to save afterwards. But let's not talk about 67, let's talk about the majority of the people just generally. According to survey, in the US and in Canada, most people do not have even $500 in their savings account. Mostly people borrow and they're in debt and that's how they're living and sustaining themselves. So it is a pretty dramatic situation that people are in and that's why many of the immigrants who wanna to come to Canada or many college graduates who are about to step in in the real world they're really nervous and rightfully so. The system, the way things are, will make for a very horrible situation in terms of trying to be free, trying to get a lot of independence and really be financially abundant and have a, have a really satisfied life. It's not that easy. Look, there are some benefits if you have a PhD, if you graduated from an Ivy League, or if you get into something like business, a successful business, or you get your, you become a celebrity or a politician, there are so many ways where you can get independence. And if you're one of those people who is more interested in business and trying something out of the norm, check out my video, the link is in the description. Here I mention how to start your own business with very practical steps and suggestions. And if you are a business-minded person, you can try and do that. However, most of us are not. I'm gonna tell you in this video the most common way on how you can become successful, the easiest way, but still with all the struggles that you will face, at the same time with practical resources on how you can improve yourself and help yourself. This video series will be based on three parts. The first part today is the most important part. Here we will discuss overall what you need to do, the whole concept, the vision, the questions you may have before you come to Canada or if you're graduating college or university within Canada. The part two, we're gonna discuss how to make cover letters and resumes and part three, we're gonna talk about job interviews. These three parts will give you the essential skills you need to be highly successful in Canada. If you're new to this channel, my name is Sean. I'm a business owner and an investor. I've done a lot of things in my life that have given me a formula and that formula is something that I'm gonna teach you guys today as someone who has been in Canada for a long, long time working with immigrants, that's my main business thousands of immigrants, we talk to them every month and we see their lives, we see how their patterns are. So today we have the benefit of making a compilation on exactly what you need to do, what steps you need to take to be successful in this country. Let's get started. The first thing is when you come to Canada, which city, you know, it depends on the city. Every city would have different rent, different income. Let's talk about the city, Toronto, because that's where most people go. So let's pick this as our example. Now, once you are in Canada, what you should do is quickly apply for jobs, okay? And this is not something you should do right on your first day. This is the work you should do even before you come to Canada, even before you graduate from your college or university. So you should be applying for jobs before that, mostly nowadays, thankfully, now you have online interviews. So even before you land, you can have a bunch of interviews. You might have a job lined up before you are in Canada or before you graduate your post-grad or whatever university or college you're in. But in case you're not, now you're starting your job search, let's talk about the websites where you have to go. Indeed.com is a really good website. Indeed.com, Job Bank, uh, I think it's Job Bank Canada, and Iluta. Robert Half. These are the best websites to apply to. There are multiple job postings there. You create your profile, you submit a bunch of resumes. Make sure your cover letters are different for each job. It's a lot of work, but if you send 50 applications a day with the same cover letter, you're going to get zero offers. Versus if you send 15 job applications in a day with proper cover letters, Quality over quantity are always wins and employers will notice the best cover letters. Now, you also want to use the power of references, okay? Your friends and family, wherever they're working or if they know someone working in a place where you can get help, ask them. Please ask them. Don't let ego come in the way. In Canada, what happens is many people apply for one job. So an employer sees multiple or hundreds of applications for one job. Why will he or she choose you? You need to be special. So if you have a reference from your friends or family, you will be on top of the list. 
Another way to make yourself go ahead in front of the list is by actually visiting the places you want to work in. When you're new to Canada or once you are starting off your career, in any career, you should not go to the top companies right away. You can try, but mostly you'll get rejections and you'll be disappointed. You want to start with odd jobs. And it doesn't matter you know, if you're a top-notch accountant or a CEO back home. Here, you will start with an odd job. And an odd job is mostly cleaning, cooking, uh, restaurant work, or anything which is not very skilled work. But you want to start. You just want to get started. And these are the types of jobs you can get your hands on. Now, the wages are pretty good. And I'll tell you about that in a sec. But remember, the best way is to walk in to these places. So you walk into a Sobeys or a Walmart or a restaurant and drop in your resume. Ask to talk to the manager. Okay. If you drop your resume to the cashier, they'll just throw it away and it's useless. Ask them. It's a little bold and you'll be probably a little shy or nervous to do that, but just ask for the manager, introduce yourself warmly, show that you are a very pleasing personality, have a big smile on your face and show them your passion. Tell them that you're really dedicated and you would do anything to get this job because it is really crucial to you. Once they see your enthusiasm, because trust me, there are people coming to drop the resumes as well, but you should stand out with your passion and positive attitude. Once you show that, you will be again on top of the list if you already don't have references. But again, if you're shy to do all of those things, go ahead and apply online with the websites I mentioned. One more thing I want to say, if you don't know a lot of people in Canada, there are so many Facebook groups. So your community groups in your in, in on Facebook would be, for example, Brazilians in Toronto or um, Indians in Vancouver or, you know, Iranians and whatever. There are so many Facebook groups. Go there, join those groups, find people. Networking is great in Canada for business. If you want to make a business, especially for jobs, if you're trying to apply for jobs, you can get good references from people. So start getting to know people. Okay, now assume you got a full time job. Trust me, it's easy if you go to a big city like Toronto. If you walk around on Dundas Street, for example, in Mississauga, that's what I did. In one day, you walk around, drop resumes into every place. I got four job offers in one day by dropping resumes. So trust me, it's not that hard in a big city to get an odd job. An odd job in Toronto with the minimum wage being $14.35 after taxes, 160 hours work, of work for a month, that will lend you approximately $2,071 after taxes. Okay, monthly, now in a full-time job, you're making $2,071. Let me tell you something else. Rent in Toronto is crazy. So in any city where you make more income, rent is a lot, okay? So what you want to do is go in a cheap place. And again, there are so many considerations. You know, you might have a partner who is maybe your wife or your girlfriend. If that's the case, maybe you can afford a better place because you both will be sharing. However, if you're on your own, go with roommates. Roommates will save you so much money or go into a place where there are people sharing things. For example, in a house with multiple rooms, but shared washrooms, shared kitchen. If you go to places like that, you're going to pay $650 rent in a month. That is a very good price in Toronto and you will have all the facilities you need. Go for furnished apartments, furnished homes. That means you would have everything there, cutlery, plates, dishwasher, um, bed sheets, everything. You don't need to buy anything, okay? You don't have money right now. You're starting off, okay? So you go into a furnished place, 650 is the rent. You want to get a monthly bus pass. Don't get individual bus passes. Monthly bus pass will allow you to save more money on trips. And also, you can use it unlimited amount of times in a month. If you buy a single day pass, you can only use it one time or twice if you buy one pass individually. That's what I'm trying to say. Also, when you're between buses, get transfers, okay? Many times you would have to, this was one mistake that I made when I was uh, starting off. So I had to go into three buses, right? So I, uh, just from one destination to the, the other, you need to change buses. So I was paying multiple fares and nobody told me I can just use a transfer. So within a two or three hour period, if you're using transfer, you are not paying additional ticket. You can just use that transfer and you can save money on that. But once again, if you have a monthly pass, you can have unlimited rights. 
All right, so that's the bus ticket thing. And again, you want to get a cell phone plan. All right, don't be surprised when you come to Canada and you're signed up for a two year contract on your cell phone. With that, your price of the cell phone is divided over 24 months and you can get a really good cell phone that way. You can even get an iPhone as a startup. So that's pretty good. And with that, you're paying about 100 or 150 per month with the cheapest plan being around that price range. So now you got your cell phone. Uh, groceries, go to Walmart, okay, don't go to Safeway or don't go to the expensive shops, go to Walmart, Walmart is the cheapest place to buy stuff and you have your monthly pass, furnished room, everything, These, this is the cheapest way to start off and even with this, your monthly expenses are going to be $1,000, uh, uh, the rent is six fifty, dollars and your income is about $2,100, so let's say roughly you're saving only $500 here, but you should not work 40 hours a week. You should do two jobs or at least one and a half jobs. When you're starting off in Canada, the first two years, if you're trying to be lazy and if you just want to do one job, you will have a really hard time for all of your lifetime in Canada. Trust me, just for the first two years, suffer a little bit, do two jobs, okay? So the other job can be a part-time job. It doesn't have to be 40 hours. So you have one 40 hours job, for a week, 120 hours job for a week, 60 hours in a week, the other job will give you another $1,000 after taxes. So important to count taxes as well. So now you're approximately earning 3,100 and your expenses are about 1,600. You're saving 1,500 every month. Now you're six months in Canada and you have $9,000 savings in your bank account courtesy of saving $1,500 every month. And at this point, you wanna take the next step because you're comfortable with your life in Canada, you know where everything is, you've made a few friends. The next step now is for you to buy a car. How would you be able to buy a car with 9,000 is you won't touch the 9,000. You would be able to finance your car. It doesn't have to be an expensive car. Get a car for $12,000, $13,000 and make sure it's about at least that price because if it's cheaper, you will pay a lot in maintenance. It's probably an old car you will get if it's cheaper. So go at least 12, 13,000. Nissan, Toyota and Honda, all right? Best brands, they don't get they're not in the mechanic shop every time, so you will save a lot on maintenance. So get get a reliable car uh, and with some miles on it, get it secondhand, don't get a new car, don't, don't be ridiculous, all right? You're just starting off. And how you would be able to finance is because you would have followed my suggestion on putting your cell phone on a two-year contract. You would have followed my suggestion on getting a credit card as soon as you come to Canada. The benefit of this is when you buy things on credit, pay it off within a month and it's it's better if you pay it off after every purchase it increases your credit score paying your cell phone bill on time increases your credit score so what the banks are looking at is within six months this guy was paying his credit card bill her credit card bill was paying their cell phone bill their credit is good your credit score goes up it changes about every six months now you qualify for a car you get a car everything is easy now you go to groceries faster you go to your work faster things are fun and easy and you need a car in Canada because it gets really cold. It gets really, really cold. No matter where you are in Canada, you will feel the pressure of the cold weather, especially in your first year. But with a car, life is now easy. Now your expenses have gone up a little bit, $500 a month, thanks to the car's insurance, the financing, and the gas on the car. Maybe a little bit more, but you will also save because you're not buying a bus pass anymore. So expenses have gone up, and now your savings will go a little down monthly. But remember, now you have potential to be a delivery guy, Uber driver, the car will open up more opportunities and you can go to your job interviews fast. Now let's do that. Let's try to apply for more jobs. And now you're comfortable with what you're doing, apply for more jobs, build more networks, or try to go into a promotion where you are working currently. You would have enough experience to do that. One really good website I would recommend you guys is contractexchange.com. That has lots of gigs. You can start right away and all you need is a laptop, mostly. Uh, it's really good for people who are starting off and it's a source of additional income. So assuming you find a gig and you up upgrade your job, you get a promotion or you find a better job. Honestly, six months, you keep applying every day, you will get somewhere. 
don't forget the fact that after a few more months, you would have one year in Canada. At this point, you would have one year experience, so you should have an upgrade on your job. Your 3000 that you were earning should now at least be 3700 as you find more opportunities in Canada. Your savings are now $15,000 and you have a one year experience in dealing with Canada, not only work, but everything else. Now, you would maybe spend some money, maybe you wanna go back to your country, let's say you lose $5,000, you have $10,000 in your savings. Time to also start thinking about long-term goals. I would highly recommend you guys to get a retirement plan at this point, after the one year mark. Retirement plans in Canada are the CPP and the I think the old age benefit. With that, you get maybe a thousand or maybe $1,500 a month when you retire. And I know it's really far, but you got to start thinking about that now. That's why if you don't think about it now, you will end up in the same misery like 90% Canadians end up in. So what you want to do at this point is get a universal life policy. What that will do is in case of your death and you have a partner or kids, they get a death benefit. You secure at least that part. You have peace of mind. But at the same time, uh, promotions like these, the one I use is the insurance retirement plan called the IRP. It is $200 a month. What it does is it builds up your fund value. So when you retire, if you get this at the age of 30 or 20, you have a million dollars or more by the time you retire as fund value. Plus you get monthly income of at least $2,400 per month with just paying 200 per month to start off. So if you start off early, you can make a lot and in the long term as the interest goes into compound and you make more money long term. So at this point, just invest $200 per month in the long term plan for yourself and your family and your retirement. With that said, and with the new car, now your expenses are up. Your income is 3,700, but your expenses are probably gonna be 2,200. That means you're now gonna save once again the same amount, 1,500. Our expenses have gone up, but so has our income, and we're also investing in our long-term goals. All right, so you have $10,000 in savings at the end of year one, okay? Let's talk about the next two years. Just be on cruise control from here. Do what you're doing. And within two years, you would have saved $36,000 from your work. You have 10,000 in your bank, but over the two years, you would have expenses. Remember, healthcare is free, so that wouldn't be your expense, but you would have other expenses, sure. So let's say $10,000 that you saved are gone, but you have $36,000 in your bank after three years, and now is the time to buy a house. A house is very important. A house will give you the financial freedom and a very good investment value, especially in Canada, and it will be a long-term benefit. I'll explain to you how. First of all, the $36,000, what can you get in that amount? Well, first of all, it is a down payment for a new house or an old house in Ontario. Now, I say Ontario because if you start looking for a house in Toronto, you're paying at least a million dollars. So you don't want to get a house, get an apartment, get a townhouse. Those things are cheaper. You can get something for $500,000 $500, within Toronto, but you don't have to get it in Toronto. You can get it anywhere near Toronto, Mississauga, uh, Brampton, Burlington, Vaughan, all these places, they are a little bit far from Toronto, but very easy to drive, less than an hour or two hours max, and you can get much cheaper prices. So I can guarantee you, you can get a very livable place for at least two bedrooms or three even for $500,000. 5% of $500,000 is $25,000. That is the down payment you will make for this house save a little extra for the closing costs. So 10, 11,000 are the closing costs. 36,000 that you have are gone now. They are now invested in your house. You're left with zero, but you have a house. Now I know that's gonna put you in a little panic. So what you gotta do is when you invest in a house, just ask your mortgage broker or your bank to give you the house plus improvements, which is usually a line of credit where you get up to $30,000 in line of credit that you can borrow anytime with very low interest rates. You can pay it off whenever you want to, usually after 10 years. And within that, with that timeline, of course, you wouldn't need it, but also you have assurance that you have still money that you can use. But it's very important to do this at this stage. And I'll tell you why again later. And now at this point, 
you should have been applying for other jobs within this two-year timeline. Upgrading your job to a better one or asking your boss for a promotion. Usually after two years, you get a very good promotion in the work you're in. If not that, you should apply for a gig. You should try to do something on the side. Maybe you're good at cooking food. Try a catering service. Maybe you're good at teaching people. Try a tutoring service. You should have something additional, either a second job, an upgrade in your job to a different office, or a promotion within your job. And by this time, after three years, if you're seriously hardworking and dedicated, you should have a job of at least $4,700, $4,800, about $1,000 increase in your current income. And that's what you would be making because you need to make that because you have a house now. So the house expense is going to be about, let's say, 3000 about 3000 If you buy a $500,000 house, you have your mortgage, you have other expenses, the taxes and utilities, it's about 3000 Okay, you just moved from your place where you were paying six fifty to a $3,000 house. Get a roommate, get someone to rent the other room, or get someone to rent the two other rooms. That will save you a lot of burden. Maybe if you're lucky, it can pay you $1,500 or $2,000. You would probably not even feel a change, but let's say you're getting $900, okay, from the rent. So your new expense for the house is $3,000, but you're already paying $600-ish previously. So essentially the increase in your house price is, or accommodation price is $2,400. You got someone to rent for $900. Now your accommodation price is um, $1,500, my bad. Your expenses monthly were $2,000, so your total expenses are now $3,500. Your income is about $4,500, $4,700 or more. So now you have a house, you have a good job, you have savings. After this three-year point, you have $1,000 being saved every month and you have a house value that's going to build every month. This is a very good place to be in and a very dangerous place to be in as well. A very good place because with this house, as I said, you will buy freedom. This is your freedom long term. This is the investment that grows 10% every year. So the house after two years, if you sell it, you sell it for $600,000, you get a $100,000 benefit. That is in two years. And you can do this every few years and upgrade your house, upgrade your life. This will be the way for freedom. Investment is really important. But what happens now is that 1000 you were saving every month, at this point, you're probably going to spend all of it, okay? Because you will probably have a family, you'll start having kids, or you will go to an, a better car or a better uh, furniture. And I'm tr telling you this happens with Canadians. This is where you will start to be hand to mouth. Everything you spend is going to be equal to everything you earn, all right? And this is okay. If, look, you want to live the rest of your life like this, people are okay and very happy with this because they want something certain. You know, they want something that works. And this works. Uh, you have your retirement plan. So by the age of 67, you will not be financially insecure with this retirement plan. And that's why I said it's really important to take it. So even with following the suggestion, you'd be pretty okay. By the age of 67, your house value will be in millions. You'll be pretty okay with that too. But you will never get out of the working life. So if you're okay with it, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But again, this is the negative of own, of living this kind of lifestyle that now you need to get out, maybe earn a little more, have more luxuries in life, have more vacations, enjoy life a little bit and be more successful. So what you got to do really here is find better investments, whatever you can invest in. But with the money that we're having, unless you have some family member lending you money or you find a really good investment opportunity, you probably don't have a lot of investment opportunities. One thing you can do is, again, make a business, start a gig. This could be something related to your work, which is so easy to do. Again, you're a cook in the kitchen. Go home, cook some stuff and put an ad up. Tell your friends on Facebook that you're doing catering. Start a business on the side. Uber, of course, you're doing Uber. Anyone can do Uber. All right. Let's say you are a computer analyst um, at work and all your work is about computers. Maybe when you go home, offer computer tutoring classes. For me, that's what happened, right? My English was really good. I said, OK, English tutoring classes and the business grew. It became a multimillion dollar company. So 
that's how you can just start with a normal gig and it can grow over time. That is what can get you out of the working situation and give you financial abundance. The other way is again, contacting people, being in good terms with everybody, making a network, gaining references and upgrading to better jobs with those references. The third thing is getting courses. Okay, so by this time, hopefully you have your permanent residence. Cost of taking tuition will be very less. You go to a college, take night classes, take online classes, get a degree, get a specialized course, and you can upgrade your income. Once again, another way for you to make more income and not just live hand to mouth. So really the way to become extremely successful in Canada is to follow all these steps, but also including a little bit extra. You would have a perfect retirement plan, a perfect five-year plan, and you wouldn't have any debt on you with this plan being smart, being hardworking, making the right decisions, and sometimes making tough decisions. When you buy the house, you will lose a lot of savings, right? But in two years, that house will give you $100,000. So with the investment, the job, taking care of your expenses, you and your family can have a wonderful life here uh, with the right approach and hard work, of course. That's it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Wait for parts two and three. There's a lot more information to come there, and I hope this really helps out. If it does, feel free to subscribe, like, share, tell your friends about what we're doing here. Tell them about AZ Education, and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you.